as hinted at earlier in an earlier video, the mini lathe is being resurrected early. So this is going to be a test of the little cheapo 11 pound, 300-400 watt DC speed controller. The forward and reverse switch for three phase, but I'm using it for DC. See if that can handle some DC current. And the mini lathe in general. Now it was quite rusty, like this. So what I've been doing is just get some scotch bright and take it to pieces bit by bit. So I've got laid out here what I believe are going to be the bare essentials because I need this working. I've got to make a few parts to get the whole book back up and running at which point this can be taken out of service again in for its major rebuild. Well, firstly there was some rust and staining on the saddle which I've taken care of now and it's looking okay-ish. There's a breakthrough here where you can see my finger sticking through. You can see my finger, there you go, you can see my finger sticking through. There's a breakthrough there and the consequences of that are when you squirt oil into that oiler, the two way covers, front and rear, seal it up pretty well and then they squirt oil <laughs> squirts oil up and in here which is not a bad thing it ended up that the lead screw was covered in oil which is fine absolutely fine now I believe these two holes here which I've cleaned out both were stuffed full of chips I believe they're for the following steady rest. I believe that's where that bolts onto. So I need to bolt something in there, put some kind of cover in there to stop them from getting chipped up. That's essential. These two bolts here that hold the apron to the saddle. There were full of chips around the outside of the bolts and it was pretty nasty in there so probably going to make some little plastic plugs or something, some little aluminium plugs to go over the Allen key bolts that are in there. Just just nice little pushing ones, nothing too nothing too you know, nothing too tight, just a little slight slight interference bit. A bit like the bearings in the apron here, where you can just like shake them a little bit and they fall out. So, the gear inside here was full of chips. So, this is the gear that goes in there. And there was chips all inside here, absolutely everywhere. And I've cleaned all the... <laughs> they were welded onto it. All the chips out of the gear, more or less. It's getting there. That will definitely need a cover. Now I've seen people make plastic covers. And I've got an old washing machine. So I'm going to use a bit of old washing machine steel. So I'm just contemplating now. Now that's a simple little template I've made up out of cardboard. So I'll just draw around that and Bob's your uncle will have a cover. But what I'm thinking here is I'll just put the half knots in. For demonstration purposes and they will fall out so there was chips on top of the half nut and in the gibbs on the half nut as well just a few get in there so I'm thinking about extending my template this way about out to here and quite wide uh, slitting it near enough halfway down here and folding a piece of the steel up because it's going to be steel up like that and then 
folding the piece of steel up and then back on itself a little bit so there'll be like a, a piece sticking out here somewhere and that will de and then sort of get the angle going that way hopefully and that will deflect the chips out of the gibs for the half knots as well I think that's pretty essential since I'm doing this I'm going to be doing this out of steel if I make this good enough which hopefully I will it will be oil tight if it is oil tight then I can run oil up to that level there so that's almost as high as the shaft which will mean there'll be a little pool of oil in there and every time it moves it will just drag the oil around and I think that's going to be better than running grease in it because well grease is okay but what you find is it spreads itself out finds where it needs to go and then it isn't on the gears anymore <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit of a you have to strip it down anyway just to on gears that's what I find anyway I mean I could put uh, chain lube on it which is a thicker oil uh, like a semi grease uh, it needs reapplying, needs reapplying, needs reapplying whereas if I just make an oil reservoir it might even have a bit in here as long as I can get it to seal so I might get some RTV out after I've made my steel plate and see if I can RTV this sealed in I think that's going to be sealed straight away and I'm going to play with the compound just tighten it up a little bit drill the extra gib holes uh, gib adjustment screws and some gib lock screws same for the cross slide no there's one more thing i've got to make a saddle lock as well because this thing is very easy i, I can just put one finger on it and push like that when the whole thing's built up and it goes so doing a facing cut on the steel it's just going to push it away so it definitely needs a carriage stop that's essential so they're the bare essentials i think that should that should suffice it doesn't need that amount of steel in there to make a carriage lock it can just be a very very simple carriage lock could just literally drill a hole at the back here and have it pinch onto the back of the carriage there that'd be absolutely fine but it wouldn't be adding a lot of um, mass to it I think a piece of steel in the center at least 10 mil thick maybe 20 mil thick and it's hanging down a little bit maybe you have a spring on it to so hold it away from it like that and pivoted on a, a bolt which is a collar bolt which will lock in tight but still leave it loose at the front there and maybe spring loaded the here as well and then the clamp at the back just to bring it up like that that'll add some mass and that's it for the time being absolutely essential from what I can see on mine it's quite lucky I'm quite lucky Everything at the back end here seems to work really smoothly. So I'm not playing with that at the moment. I just want to get it working. Oh, and there were some other things as well. I only have that tool holder. And it is not machine square. We've got we've got 0 0.605, 0 0.6375, 0 0.5805, 0 0.5725. They're the thicknesses of that bottom land. So I've measured across there with a micrometer, I've measured across there with a micrometer, and so on and so forth. You get it. And it, it, they're all higgledy piggledy, so they will not hold tools. I am that for making one tool holder. I have 
I think three or four more in my garage on the Miller machine. I have just completed a job on the Miller machine which has freed it up which I can now set up to do these. Anyhow, after I've squared that up properly then I'm going to cut slot, 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 drill tap, drill tap, drill tap, blah 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 blah, drill hole, so that will go there. Then I will have four of those so I can have eight tools set up for a quick change tool post sort of thing so just top knot off add off another one on tighten up gone we're doing the next job so I'll have four of those for a start and that'll get me going so I've got plenty to be getting on with until I decide to make the tool holders for that which will be coming up it's definitely going to happen. That's the quick change tool post I've got for this. It fits it beautifully, so I will be making some of those on the shaper very shortly. There we go. It will not be long until I can test it out well and truly. Righty ho. I don't have any ground gauge pins. So I'm using a couple of pieces of uh, Cleveland Momax round stuff. And I've got a more than right tenths micrometer, two to three inch. And I started off measuring on this side, going up that way as far as I could. And I got to here. These two measurements are from this side of the pins going back down again and I'm getting four tenths deviation so obviously the pins aren't exactly parallel they are only high speed steel so you know you've got to expect a little bit of deviation in these but as I was going up here we've got two inches 68 thou 67 thou and two tenths 68 and 9 tenths, 69 and 8, 69 and 8, 69 and 8. So I'm guessing it's 69 and 8, 2 inches 69 and 8. And then obviously I've got the higher reading here, and there's a lower reading here, so I guess it's worn at the end here and worn at the end here, which makes a little bit of sense. And it looks like it's 3 thousandths nearly it's worn. Yeah, one and a half thou per side. I'm guessing the tool pressure is pushing that way, so I'm guessing this side here is pushed in here, and that side at the back there is pushed in there. That's just what I'm guessing. So I will not be able to adjust the gibs perfectly, so there will be some play here until these get scraped in. So I just had a quick look at that before I decided to do all the drilling and anything to see if I really need to do anything now before I put it back together again. Well I think 3 thou is going to be fine. I'll do the same to the um, dovetails in the cross slide. And I'll do the same to both dovetails on the compound slide as well. Righty ho, I have elected this piece of steel to be the carriage lock. So I'm going to lob that up in the saw down to that mark there. That should give it enough to go the full length of the carriage. The full, the full width of the carriage. Then I'm gonna mill it. <laughs> <I'll> make it. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it do that. Make it into like a T nut kind of thing, an extra long T nut. It fits exactly inside. Does it? It's got loads of loads of clearance to fit inside there, and a bit of side to side wiggle and what have you. I want it too tight. 
The only problem I can see with it is it's going to foul here. Mm, it might get in the way. Okay, you'll see my garage is a complete mess in a moment, but here I'm showing you a couple of wheels I'm constructing to make machine moving appliances with. There's a bottle jack here of two which I'm going to be making machine jacks to move the Bridgeport Miller machines and the shaper. Now I do have another saw, a Waco saw, but this was advertised on eBay, spares or repairs, doesn't cut straight, previously broken, I'll show you the previously broken bit, just there. It didn't have a safety shield here, so I made this, I've handcrafted it as you can see. Got a couple of boobies on it, one there and one down there. And folded it. This was a washing machine, so it had all these folds in it already and everything, which just give it more rigidity. I haven't done the fixing here yet and finalised everything yet. It didn't have a safety shield back in, so you could put your fingers in the belt. So I don't have the washing machine of, of this or that. And all of that. And I haven't put the latch on yet, so I've got a piece of wire holding it onto the latch. And it said it didn't cut straight. I mean, how straight do you need the cut to be? Because well, I've cut all this steel on the mill so far I cut all this steel on it obviously you will just forget about the milled bits but all these bits here and all these bits here so all those bits there done so it hasn't got, it hasn't got an automatic stop so it continues to carry on cutting afterwards so I've got to sort that out yet yeah? you have to unplug it um, but apart from that, I think the best cut in the world. Well, you know, that's that's pretty straight. So this is the gun going to be the carriage lock. Obviously, it's not going to go there, it's going to go underneath the carriage and be held up. I think I've got a good length on it. I've tried to make it exactly the same length. Anyway, now I've got to fix it somehow. So that's going to slip in there like that. Not a problem. There's a little bit of clearance down there, even when it's all the way up. So that should be good. There's the profile, just like making a tee up basically. You can see it better from that side. I haven't done no excessive filing. Very smooth, although that fly cut side looks a little bit not smooth, it's pretty smooth. I used a bit of carbide in the tees there. It turned out very nice. So, that is formed. The next thing I am going to form is going to be a carriage lock. A carriage stop, shall I say. Something that's going to go over here and clamp on. So I'm working up to a depth of cut, a length of cut, shall I say. I've got somewhere to stop instead of guessing. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea if it had some kind of uh, adjustment. I've got quite a lot of overhang here, so I'm going to 
get some aluminium because I think aluminium will be a little bit better cling on to the ways there and come up with something to have adjustable stop I want a fine adjustment so I think I'm going to use BA threads because they are fine not the finest threads you can get but they are the finest threads that I can tap and die with and since they're so small and fiddly it's better to tap and die them now at present I don't have a working lathe the whole block is in bits and this one is in bits <laughs> so <laughs> it's all going to be mill work this is I can't see it being a problem well I can but I'm going to try and do some turning on the mill and get that done. Obviously a lot of it's just going to be shaping with the mill. 90 degrees, whatever these are, ways and little clamping thing. But the threaded rod, uh, yeah, may have to wait. <laughs> or it may just have to be something rudimentary for a start until this is up and running and can make its own threaded rod so that's what I'm looking at now here's the spring so it's a conical spring I've got here I think I'll use that and that will go somewhere there probably going to recess uh, the spring in the wider size down there but land in there Drill it all the way through obviously, put a space for a cap screw on this side here and recess the cap screw and that will be sticking out a little bit and I suppose I'd better put some kind of land tube around the bolt that so you can bottom out into it or, or just make a shoulder bolt I'll probably end up making a shoulder bolt once the lathe, lathe is done so it will shoulder out and then just leave a little bit of a gap so this can flex a little bit underneath so this will be clearance and then this side will just pull up and obviously it will only bite into the bottom of the bed around this kind of area here that's fine and this is quite weighty so it's added some mass to the, mass to the lathe I mean obviously it's, it's not as heavy as that but it's quite weighty it's in comparison to the cross slide in weight so I'm quite happy about the mass that's been added to the lathes saddle there and finally today this is it before I pack up I have a clamp which is going to go underneath it's got a rather pleasing curve to it I think you'll agree it was the edge of a six and a half inch round piece of aluminium and you can see the same curvature here six and a half inch radius so this is going to be the clamp nut underneath this is going to be drilled and tapped and that's going to go there like that they are the same width and they will be finally milled together then I have a 90 degree v-way here and a 50 degree tick coming up to this angle which is left over from the cut, I'll just square it up when I cut this off from the original block so the little 90 will be in there and this will all be clearance around here I've done that 50 degree angle just because there's a bit of snot around here and what have you and I don't want it binding up so that's to be a nice little 
I might even put it on the rotary table and do a, a, a circle there. <laughs> Perfect, perfect curve. Well, I ain't decided yet, but for a start, easily mill 50 degrees straight off. Then, the sharp right of you would have noticed there's a taper. It goes from the start of where the clamp goes uh, to the start of the cut out for the. prismatic ways and you can see there's like a land here there's a land there and the tape goes straight up to that land and this will all be clearance then you will see there's a vertical line here and there's a four mil section which will be cut out here and a piece of steel will be screwed into that the steel will come out to about here somewhere and it will be a nice little place to enable me to rest a mag base and do other things. I've got a similar thing on the Holbrook, it's very handy. I want one here. I might put one on the saddle as well because the one that moves up and down with the saddle on the Holbrook is really, really useful. So I may also duplicate the steady rest holes and put a couple of holes here and then have another piece of steel coming off here around here somewhere a little block of steel here not only when you want your hand wheel to protect you from the chips when you're doing manual turning it does it's also a nice place to put a mag base so you can do DTIing up here and stuff and what have you and wind it out the way, wind it in the way, do all sorts of things instead of making a tool post one especially if you've got one of these tool posts you don't want to be continually setting up on centre and putting another tool into a tool holder and you just don't need to be a hassle a little deflection shield here and a little deflection shield here so the two things I've got a 60 degree angle I've worked down here a 45 45 with a 50 degree then I've got a hole to drill here, there's a cross hatch there, it's duplicated might be easier to see on the other side, cross hatch there, there's a hole to drill through there, that is for the carriage stop lock bolt, and then of course the clamping bolt is going to go in there, so I've just spent a fair old few hours after milling that out, or including milling that out, blowing it up and marking it out, now the clamp clamp section which is going to go underneath it I don't think it needs any marking out it's 60 mil in and halfway down so I just need to edge find that edge come up come in 100 thou come in 16 mil edge find this edge edge find that edge split the difference and go in the center and just pop the hole straight in there and then that will line up exactly where it needs to line up so no no bother there so there's two parts roughed out we've got the carriage lock and the carriage stop both roughed out to this is final dimension and near enough final dimension after I've got all this bolted together with the lock pinch bolt in it I am going to face off both sides uh, that's all that's going to be left after I've done all the milling so I'll do all the milling in here and around there and what have you after that's all done, I'll do the drilling of the holes. I'm not doing drilling the holes first, I haven't decided. It might be easier to do it first. But anyway, drilling and milling on that first. Tap and drill that. Bolt them two together. Make sure it's all lined up beautifully. Bolt them two together and then mill both sides. And I haven't got any more time today, so I can't do any more today. So I'm just going to upload as far as I have got so far. This is three days worth of doing bits on this, and doing bits on the bridge port on the machine, and doing bits on the whole block, and doing bits on the machine movers, and so on and so forth. I've just concentrated around about four hours, maybe six hours. Yeah.